In the name of Jesus, who has indeed died, who is risen, and who lives for us. Dear brothers and sisters, they sure don't look like much, nor do they usually taste like anything either. And yet, according to a 2020 report in the Washington Post, Americans every year spend $35 billion on these things. Have any idea what I'm talking about? Vitamins and dietary supplements. $35 billion a year, that comes out to just under $150 for every man, woman, and child. Do you spend that much on vitamins and dietary supplements? You know, dietitians tell us that if we're eating a healthy, balanced diet, we really shouldn't need this extra. However, there is a certain vitamin that everyone living in places like Canada or Iceland or Greenland should consider taking. Can you guess what vitamin that would be? Vitamin D, the sunshine pill, absolutely. Because one major source of vitamin D is the sunshine and those long winters up in Canada sometimes make it a little difficult to get outside and to absorb the sunshine that you need. Because vitamin D helps our body absorb calcium and build healthy bones and teeth. So when I lived in Canada, I liked taking a vitamin D supplement. I liked the certainty of knowing that I had gotten my daily dose of vitamin D even if I had been cooped up inside for days on end. I don't suppose we who live here in Arizona need to take vitamin D supplements. We get plenty of sunshine. But there is another supplement that we all need, and that's vitamin F. Never heard of vitamin F before? Nor have many dietitians. And yet without this vitamin, there is no eternal life. I'm using vitamin F in this sermon to refer to forgiveness. When Jesus died on the cross, he won forgiveness for every man, woman, and child. And yet there are times we wonder, is that forgiveness really for me? And so God reaches down and he gives us a certain assurance that we have forgiveness through the sacrament of Holy Communion, which is really nothing other than vitamin F. In answering the question, what blessing do we receive through the eating and drinking in Holy Communion? Martin Luther stated, we receive forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Where did Luther get that idea from? From Jesus, who said about the wine of communion, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This morning together, we want to appreciate all over again the wonderful blessing God gives to us in Holy Communion, nothing less than vitamin F. Listen to the words of our text as it's recorded in Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. 
Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. So far, our text. What would you have thought this morning if, as you were approaching the church, you smelled smoke? You looked all around you, thinking that maybe it's an early forest fire, but you didn't see any flames or smoke coming from the trees. But then to your shock, as you turned into the church parking lot, you saw that the smoke was pouring out of this building. But before you could reach for your phone to dial 911, as if we'd need to do that since the fire station's right down the road, but you never know, before you had a chance to do that, you saw something else that was extraordinary. God himself, seated on a throne, high above the church, blocking out the view of Agassiz and Fremont. And floating beside him and above him were angels called seraphim that had six wings each. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. They were saying this so loudly that you notice that the whole church was shaking. The walls as if they were paper plates quivering in the spring wind. That was the kind of sight that the prophet Isaiah received in our text. What was his reaction? Woe! No, not the kind of woe that Michael says when he's ripping down a, a course on his mountain bike, as in, wow, this is awesome, dude! <laughs> Rather, it was a cry of fright. Woe is me, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Like a career criminal who always gets nervous whenever he sees a uniform officer because he's reminded of his crimes, the one that he's already served time for, the ones that he hasn't been caught for yet. And he's nervous. The prophet Isaiah was more than nervous. He was undone because he confessed, I'm a man of unclean lips. And he was standing in the presence of a holy God. Can we not echo Isaiah's confession? Are we not also people of unclean lips? Lips that were made to praise God instead? Question what he's up to in our lives. Lips that are made to encourage others instead sneer at their ideas. Lips that should defend reputation instead delight in spreading gossip. Lips that should say no thank you when offered another glass of wine that would put us over the edge instead gladly accept the gift. Isn't it amazing how one body part can be guilty of so many sins? To make matters worse, the prophet Isaiah was standing before God all by himself. There were no other sinners that he could point to and say, Lord, I may have unclean lips, but he's got unclean lips and hands. That's how it will be on Judgment Day for us. For sure, we will be surrounded by all of humanity who ever lived. But when we stand before God, God will have only eyes for us. We will not have the ability to point to others and to say, at least I'm not like. God will say, don't worry about them. I want you to compare yourself, but you're to compare yourself to me. Be holy as I, the Lord, your God, am holy. What did the sinful Isaiah and the sinful people that have gathered here in front of God deserve to receive from that God? Well, just as fire must burn up a finger that's been thrust into its flame, Isaiah and you and I should be burned by God's anger at our sins. 
And so what happened next in Isaiah's vision seems totally appropriate. One of the six-winged angels swooped down and with tongs grabbed a live hot coal from the altar. And he held it up to Isaiah's lips. It looks like one of those torture scenes from a movie where the interrogator is trying to get his victim to confess or else. Only that coal was not meant to harm Isaiah, but to heal him. When that coal touched his lips, they were sterilized. And the angel added, look, this coal has touched your lips, gone your guilt, your sins wiped out. If you're still awake, you're probably asking yourself, how can coal forgive sins? Consider where that live coal must have come from. It must have been the altar of burnt offering, the place where every day the priests would sacrifice a lamb at least and burn it up before the Lord. That lamb was offered as a sacrifice in place of the sinners who should have been burned up on that altar. A lamb which foreshadowed the sacrifice Jesus would make for our sins. Being touched with that coal from the altar of burnt offering would be like being touched with a section of the cross in which Jesus died. Could you imagine? If we owned the original cross on which Jesus died, not only would people come to Flagstaff to go to Snowball and then drive on their way to Grand Canyon, they would stop here. And they would pay good money to Miss Tammy to be able to be led into church and to see the cross. They would even pay her extra if she would let them touch and kiss the cross because, well, there's got to be some blessing from that, right? In Holy Communion, God does better. He himself touches our lips, not with a section of the cross, but with a sacrifice from the cross. Jesus himself. And so it is easy because we celebrate communion twice a month to look at these wafers and the wine and to think that this is just part of our tradition and custom, and yet we ought to come in here with that same awe that we're willing to pay someone to receive the sacrament, to receive Jesus through the bread and through the wine. Here's something else that's need about communion, that it makes it even better than the vision that Isaiah received. Isaiah saw that vision once. And his ministry lasted as long as 60 years, six zero years. I wonder if there wasn't a time later on that he thought to himself, did I really see God seated on a throne high above the temple? Did I really hear his holy angels singing so loudly that I could feel the voice inside of me, or was I just dreaming that? Was I really forgiven, or is that my wishful thinking? We can feel the same way too, can't we? We hear every week Jesus died on the cross for all people and for you, and yet sometimes we wonder, especially when we think back to our youthful indiscretions. And guilt slams into us like a tsunami loosened by a distant tremor. And then when we thought we'd forgotten about it and gotten over it, it washes back over us, dragging us back down into the depths. How do you wriggle free from guilt's grasp? You listen to the words of Jesus in Holy Communion. Eat, drink. My body, my blood, given for you. You see, while there is 
a problem of taking too much vitamin D apparently can cause kidney stones. There isn't that problem with Holy Communion and vitamin F. Jesus invites us to come often to receive the sacrament. What would happen if we would regularly reject that invitation? What if your friend invited you to come over for dinner sometime and repeatedly invited, and you kept finding reasons why you couldn't come? Wouldn't they finally stop inviting you? Wouldn't they conclude that you really didn't want to hang out with them? God, in his grace, will never stop offering us that invitation of forgiveness as long as we are alive. But casual contempt can have eternal consequences. For where there is no hunger for forgiveness, there can be no salvation. And so if you have missed the Communion Sunday or you're just feeling particularly down about your relationship with God, let me know. We can set up to meet for private communion. You can't get too much vitamin F. No, receiving vitamin F doesn't make you more forgiven, but it does make you more certain of forgiveness. Because couldn't the angel have said to Isaiah, after his confession, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips, he simply could have swooped down and said, stop your sniveling, God has already forgiven you. He doesn't. He went out of his way to take the tongue, to get the coal, and to press it to his lips. That's the kind of God you have. He does not play hard to get. He doesn't just tell you, I forgive you, I love you. He shows you through his son's body and blood. Isaiah's close encounter with a piece of coal didn't just assure him of forgiveness. It also empowered him for service. After the angel had spoken his words, it was God's turn to speak up. And he seemed to address no one in particular when he said, who will go for us? And little Isaiah, do you see him at the bottom of the picture? He said, here am I, send me. Do you realize that Isaiah had no idea what he was signing up to do? He did not ask, how long is this going to take, God? How much is it going to cost? How difficult will it be? Apparently, none of that crossed his mind because he was so overflowing overflowing with thankfulness at the forgiveness that he had received. It did not matter what God had for him to do. Even if it meant, as it did for Isaiah, that he had the unenviable task of preaching to a stubborn nation for 60 years that, by and large, wouldn't listen to his words. The same thing happens to us, too, through Holy Communion, We are not just reassured of forgiveness, but we are empowered for service. And so when God calls us to be honest students, who use our time wisely, who do our homework to the best of our ability, who turn away from the temptation to cheat even though it's just online instruction, then we are living as God wants us to be. We show that we are ready for service when, as businessmen and women, we don't stoop to unethical practices, even if that means that might put us behind the competition. Being empowered for service means, even though I'm really angry at what this person did to me, I am so glad God has given me an opportunity to put his love into action and to extend forgiveness and to drop those thoughts of revenge. We can do this because something really happens in Holy Communion. You really are connected to the Holy Spirit, but if we stay away, it's like refusing to eat. How long can you go before you don't have the energy to do anything, much less your work? 
And so it is as our lives as Christians. You know, scientists have said that vitamin D is not just good for helping your body absorb calcium. They say that it can stave off certain cancers and even help the heart. And so it really has become one of the popular vitamin supplements to take. What I find interesting is I've never seen anyone at the health store or grocery store looking at the vitamin D bottle going, I don't think this stuff really works. They just reach for it and throw it in the shopping cart without asking any of those questions. Why? Because the scientists have told me it will do these things. It's easy to look at these little bits of wafer and that sip of wine and yet ask the question, what can that really do? But if we have no problems with believing what the scientists tell us about these vitamin pills, why should we have a problem believing what God has told us about the bread and wine? It works because it's also the body and blood of your Savior given to you in bite-sized pieces that you may ingest this vitamin F, the forgiveness of sins. Receive it often. Amen.